Let's get into the specifics about how to actually solve the objections. The one that we hear all the time is, I'm not interested. How would you go about solving that one? Not interested is just a deflection. What it means is they assume they know what you do and they assume they know what you want. And so we need to get ahead of that assumption. So the key to handling a not interested objection is no one's interested in your product, but they are interested in solving problems. So we need to be ready to ask a question back saying, well, but do you deal with these problems? Of course, you're not interested, right? I called you. But having your question ready of, well, but do you struggle with these types of problems? Because then it might be worth the conversation. I love that. You're showing the double A technique in action. You're acknowledging it. Of course, you're not interested. You're like making it about them up front. And then you are asking a question. And in this case, we're going to call it a pie question. P-I, pain or impact. And these types of pie questions will help you think about what is the thing that makes it relevant to them. Let's try another one. Um, I don't have time right now. Well, I'm sure you're busy. We're acknowledging. I'm sure you're busy. I know you're busy. But now we're actually going to make that the reason why we're calling. So we're going to flip it, make the objection, the reason. Someone says, I'm too busy. Oh, I'm sure you're swamped right now. That's actually why I'm calling. A lot of VPs are struggling with X, Y, Z right now. Is that taking up any of your time? Love it. You're making it about them. You're using their words. You're mirroring their words. And that shows that you're not being a robot. You're not just like on autopilot. You're actually listening to them. I love that. What's another common objection you hear? One that trips up a lot of people is when they ask, I'm sorry, what do you do? What is this call about? Now, when you hear that question, Please, please, please. That is not a buying question. That is not an opportunity to pitch, which happens with a lot of prospectors. If someone says, I'm sorry, what do you do? I'm like, oh, well, let me tell you. It's like, we are the most innovative, groundbreaking, disruptive. No, no, no. What they're actually waiting for is for you to say something that they can say not interested to. So the key is pivoting back to a pie question. They ask you, what do you do? And you can respond back with, well, you know how a lot of VPs struggle with or a lot of VPs are dealing with or a lot of VPs are frustrated with X, Y, Z. We might be able to solve that. I was hoping to ask a couple quick questions, see if it's even worth a bigger conversation. We're bringing it back to the problem and the pain, not our product. You're also doing something really clever with that, where the influence technique is it's not me versus you. You're implying a third party. So you're saying something like other people struggle with this. And so then they're not like, oh, well, I don't need your solution. They're saying like, I'm not like that other VP, which then still keeps this conversation going back and forth. Because if they answered it the other way, oh, what do you do? They come up, they find whatever excuse to like reject you or say like, we don't need that you're stuck in the water. But by using that third party reference, I really like how you did that. Well, any other examples that we should bring up that are pretty common ways we could apply this technique? One of the most important things we actually need to call out here is the tone. I want you to go back and listen to how Dan and I sound when we're handling the objection, because oftentimes that can make or break our ability to handle it. Because when we hear an objection, one of two things tends to happen. We either fight it where we become aggressive too. That won't work. Or we freeze, we get shaky. Well, you know, actually I was just maybe hoping that we could, you know, the tone here, calm, confident, curious, but we have to make sure that we sound like we care because if you try to fight fire with fire for objections, it's never going to work. Alphas don't like trying to be out alpha. They're going to dig in their heels. And, you know, my dog does the same thing. If I'm taking him on a walk and he doesn't want to go a certain direction and he pulls, I'm like, no, we're going this way and I can pull him. Then he digs down and it takes two people to fight. It takes two people to pull on a leash. Two things in this case, two animals. But this is the tone that matters. If you're going to challenge somebody, they're going to say something like, I'm not interested. And you're saying, Oh, you're not interested in helping onboard your new... The, the implication of that question 
can sound like you're challenging them. But when it comes across in the right way with the right tone, that is essential. That's what great prospectors do. And you can say the right thing, but with the wrong tone and have a completely wrong reaction. So as you're practicing this, record yourself. First, practice in role plays with your manager, with your teammates. And so when you get confronted with something like this, it becomes autopilot. It becomes easy for you. You avoid all of those maybe nervous energy that you might have when it goes into it. All of these objections you can plan for. Sorry, not all. Let's say 95% of the objections that you hear, you've heard before. Your team has heard before. That means that you can plan for it. You can practice it and come across sounding like a true expert.